When an anomaly is first detected by an SCP Foundation field agent, it's up to the Foundation's mobile task forces to tag and bag the impossible entities before they can do any more harm. Sometimes these retrievals are uneventful, other times, not so much. Especially when they're dealing with brutal forces of nature, like SCP-096 also known as the Shy Guy, a creature that, from the very first interaction with the Foundation, had a reputation for being dangerous and needed to be feared. A series of vague sightings and mysterious disappearances up in the frosty mountains of the Yukon first sparked the Foundation's interest. When they were certain that they had an anomaly on their hands, two retrieval teams, Zulu-9A and Zulu-9B, were dispatched to secure and contain the entity. Zulu-9A took the lead in a heavy-duty chopper, equipped with 50 caliber GAU-19 heavy machine guns, and carrying an AT-4 anti-tank launcher. They were prepared for anything, or so they thought, as they established a visual on SCP-096 while two clicks away from the target. They couldn't get a clear line of sight on the creature, but it appeared to be stationary, docile, and was making no attempt to flee. Piece of cake, right? Little did they know that SCP-096 was just looking away from them. If it was facing towards them, it'd be a whole different horror story, as Zulu-9A were about to find out. The team landed their helicopter next to the creature and were shocked to see that it was completely naked, in spite of the sub-zero temperatures all around them. The creature was unnaturally thin, as though it had been starved for weeks, with bone-white skin and unnaturally long limbs. The team guessed that the creature's arms must have been at least 1.5 meters long, but its docile nature and insubstantial body mass gave the impression that it wouldn't prove too difficult to contain. That is, until they saw its face. Zulu-9A's captain was the lone survivor of the incident, as he was lucky enough to be looking away when the creature turned towards his team. The rest of the squad ended up staring eye to eye with SCP-096, and from that moment on, wasn't docile anymore. The creature began to whimper, then cry, then sob uncontrollably in a way that sounded eerily human. This sudden change in temperament startled the rest of Zulu-9A, and they opened fire on the creature. Under the hail of gunfire, SCP-096 entered a murderous frenzy and began tearing into the hapless squad of soldiers. While its flesh and organs did seem to take damage as a result of the barrage of 50 caliber rounds from the helicopter-mounted machine guns, its skeletal structure remained intact, and it continued its onslaught, tearing the team limb from limb, even after they'd blown practically all the flesh from the creature. The AT-4 anti-tank launcher proved equally ineffective at stopping SCP-096 while it was in attack mode, and it was only after slaughtering the entire team that it returned to its docile state. Nobody knows exactly what the creature did to Zulu-9A after the gunfire started, but no trace of the team was left behind. Zulu-9B touched down soon after, and with a grave warning from the captain not to look at the creature's face, they were finally able to subdue it. A bag was placed over SCP-096's face, which seemed to soothe it enough to move it to a nearby Foundation facility. Little did they know, they just obtained one of the deadliest SCPs of all time. And while it may have been under lock and key for now, it seemed inevitable that it would get out and cause more violence and chaos. Research and containment procedures for the SCP-096 were put under the command of Dr. Dan, a senior researcher at the site. It was his job to find out exactly what this being was capable of, and the more he tested, the more he realized that they were dealing with something truly terrifying. Disposable D-Class personnel were used to figure out exactly what it was that caused the creature to enter its attack mode. Just as it had during the initial retrieval mission, SCP-096 went berserk when any of the attending personnel saw its face. In this stage, it would enter a period of considerable and unstoppable distress for one to two minutes, covering its face and wailing loudly. When the period of distress ended, the creature would mercilessly slaughter every D-Class that had seen its face, and just like with Zulu-9A, no trace of their bodies would be left behind. Dr. Den was horrified and intrigued by this phenomenon. The creature killed anyone that saw its face directly, but could the same be said for indirect depictions of the creature's face, such as images and videos? Dr. Dan was desperate to find out. More D-Class personnel were brought in to test this, to frightening results. Dr. Dan found that the creature did indeed still enter attack mode when people saw pictures and videos of SCP-096's face, 
The creature seemed to have an innate sense of when people were viewing these representations, even when it should have had no conceivable way of knowing. It didn't matter how far away or how many barriers were in place between the viewer and the creature, the attack mode would still activate. And once it did, it seemed as though nothing could stop the creature from hunting down the one who saw its face. With all of this new data, special containment procedures were devised to keep the creature safely under lock and key. Its cell was a 5 meter by 5 meter by 5 meter airtight steel cube, fitted with advanced pressure sensors and laser detectors to ensure that SCP-096 remained in its cell without risking anyone having visual contact with the creature's face. All cameras and video equipment were strictly forbidden, and weekly checks for any cracks or holes in the containment cell were mandatory. Of course, none of this would stop the creature if anyone somehow saw its face. In order to solve that little problem, Dr. Dan would need to continue his research. To find a method of subverting the creature's deadly glance, they needed to know exactly what they were dealing with. But how could they, when even a glance at a photo or video of the being meant certain death? A potential solution was proposed, creating an artistic representation of the creature's face, something that hadn't yet been attempted. But how would they achieve such a feat? Simple. They'd procure a D-Class prisoner with some artistic talent, and they found one who had been a tattoo artist before becoming a Foundation guinea pig. Dr. Dan formulated an ingenious plan for keeping this D-Class alive for long enough to accurately draw an image of SCP-096's face. He would be placed in a bathysphere diving bell several kilometers underwater and tens of kilometers away from the containment cell where the SCP was being held. The D-Class was made to look at a photograph of the creature's face and then replicate that image in a pencil sketch. Dr. Dan first confirmed that the creature's attack mode is only activated by the creature's face by having the D-Class look at a series of photos of the SCP's body parts, one by one, finally finishing with its face. The D-Class began drawing and even remarked on how creepy the SCP's facial features were, despite not knowing the deadly context. Meanwhile, back in its containment cell, SCP-096 sensed someone viewing its face and entered its inconsolable crying state followed by its attack mode. It broke out of containment easily and began making a beeline for the D-Class, traversing the miles between it and its prey. The D-Class didn't know it as he locked the finished drawing into a separate, autonomous submersible, but he was already dead. As the drawing made its way up to a researcher on the surface, SCP-096 dived into the water and started swimming down towards the artist. Minutes later, the bathysphere was breached, and the D-Class was torn to shreds. SCP-096 was recaptured without issue by surface recovery team Foxtrot 303A, and further testing on the drawing showed that artistic representations of SCP-096's face were in fact harmless. From this experience, we now know that the creature has a gaunt face with totally white eyes, possibly indicating blindness and a grossly extended jaw. Nevertheless, Dr. Dan was adamant that SCP-096 was too dangerous to be left alive and requested permission from the upper echelons of the Foundation to terminate the creature by any means necessary. However, the doctor's request would fall on deaf ears until it all started with a seemingly innocent image. While it's now been redacted for your safety, the black speck inside the yellow circle was once a minuscule image of SCP-096 taken unknowingly in the 1990s by a semi-professional mountaineer. One day they were looking at old photographs when his eyes passed over the tiny speck without even noticing that he had seen anything. But SCP-096 noticed and began entering its attack mode. It tore through its steel containment unit like tissue paper, causing the release of a nerve agent that killed a number of attending Foundation staff. The monster then fled the base and began pursuing its prey, with Mobile Task Force Tau-1 in hot pursuit. Dr. Oleksy, who was helping to manage the site where the SCP was contained, was in dismay over the situation. Dr. Dan was out of the country at the time, trying to discover more about the creature's origins. However, he did leave the Mobile Task Force with a new secret weapon against the rampaging Shy Guy, Project Scramble. Scramble were state-of-the-art goggles featuring a new technology created by Dr. Dan, which, using artistic renditions of 096's facial features, could detect and scramble the features of SCP-096 into an unrecognizable form, preventing the normally deadly effect of gazing upon its face. In theory, this would allow MTF Tau-1 to engage safely with 096 once its prey had been eliminated and bring it back into containment. But disaster struck on two fronts. First, 
The prey in question was located in a population center, creating the potential for a huge loss of life. And the second bigger problem was that the scramble technology didn't work, as stray pixels of the creature's face would reach the eyes of the task force before the internal microprocessor had time to scramble them. The mission turned into a death sentence, as SCP-096 slaughtered almost the entire task force, as well as a number of civilians in town, including an infant and its entire family. It was a monumental disaster, made even worse by a final revelation. Dr. Dan and Dr. Alexei had themselves facilitated the entire containment breach and allowed the resulting massacre to happen. With Dr. Dan hoping it would be enough motivation for Foundation Command to greenlight his research into destroying the creature. Anything that would give him the opportunity to kill this thing would be worth the bloodshed. His plan worked, and the SCP Foundation saw it his way, approving his request to neutralize SCP-096. However, success comes at a cost for Dr. Dan. Once he figures out a way to finally kill the creature, though done in his line of duty, he himself will be terminated by the Foundation for his crimes against humanity. But considering how much damage SCP-096 is capable of causing if it ever got to a major population center, or even worse, was ever caught on camera and broadcast to a worldwide audience, the doctor himself would likely deem his own death a justifiable cost. To this day, the Foundation is researching ways to kill the creature, and they're still looking for their silver bullet. And the pressure is on. They hadn't known about the seemingly innocent picture that sparked the last containment breach, the one taken decades ago, in which the Shy Guy had only occupied four tiny pixels. Four tiny pixels that resulted in multiple innocent lives lost. So be careful where you look, because who knows how many other photos of the creature are lurking out there. Photos with an innocent dot in the background. Your eyes glance over it, not even noticing the little blip until you hear a distant wailing that seems to be getting closer and closer and closer. And then, it's already too late.